Hi, and welcome to Charger 360, everybody. Formerly the Dr. Z and J-Dub podcast. <laughs> I'm J.W. Stewart, along with Bruce Barber, and joined by our interim president here at the University of New Haven, Dr. Shea Zenger, or Dr. Z, as he enjoys to be called. Dr. Z, it's great to see you. How are you? Good to be here, since you've kicked me off with the co-hosting <laughs> and taking Bruce. Let's just cut to the chase yeah. here. Yeah. That, that I, th I think we need maneuvering. To, yeah, yeah, I think we need to address yeah. the elephant in the room, if yeah. you will. But yeah. before we get to that, some brief introductions, as I mentioned. Uh, I'm J.W. Stewart. Uh, I'm a professor here at the University of New Haven. Uh, my background is in sports broadcasting and journalism. I worked at ESPN and NBC. I've been here at the University of New Haven since 2018. Started the podcast with Dr. Z during the pandemic in 2020. And here we are in 2022 as we get ready to kind of pass the torch a little bit. But Bruce, I'll let you introduce yourself to the community. Yes, I'm Bruce Barber. I've had perhaps the most uh, bizarre career in um, media. <laughs> I have gone from the 18-year co-host of uh, Smith & Barber, The Morning Show, which was um, irreverent, um, and uh, <laughs> uh, we were very successful because we were irreverent, um, and then I you know, married and had kids and didn't feel so irreverent anymore. <laughs> I was just scared, um, and so I wasn't feeling so much uh, like being that guy, so I became an independent producer uh, working for Connecticut Public Radio. And then seven years ago, I was fortunate enough to be hired by this wonderful university to be the uh, general manager of 88.7 WNHU, available at WNHU.org. Um, <laughs> and I also get to teach independent studies in broadcasting and podcasting. And I tell people sincerely that out of this bizarre career arc, that this is really my favorite uh, a portion of my career because just working with these amazing students and we have students behind the cameras in the control room today so it's favorite part of my career. Well I think both of you, your, your paths, your backgrounds are indicative of the kind of talent that we have uh, amongst our faculty and staff at, at the University of New Haven. Yeah I would agree across all disciplines mm -hmm. we have a lot mm -hmm. of people who are experts in their yeah. field yep. You're an expert in many fields. Yeah. You've done a lot of great things. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, yeah. Dr. Z, you've done a lot of great things. For mm -hmm. those who, who may not know or tuning in for the first time, please give our audience an introduction of, of who you are and how your career path has kind of changed over the years. Well, as of July 1, I assumed the role of interim president of the University of New Haven and something that I am uh, honored to serve our students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, and the greater UNH community in this capacity. I've, I've, ha I've walked on both sides of the aisle in, in higher education over the last 35 years in athletics and academia, and uh, uh, this is where we are at this point in time. You're originally from Kansas. Yes. Your parents were educators. Yes. That's been an important part of your yeah. life yeah. for your entire life. For a 56-year-old, it's probably unusual for someone to often start their bio with my parents were. Mm -hmm. but, but where I'm from, just like people here often say my, 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 my father was a lobster fisherman or my mother was, worked in a textile mill or whatever that might be, uh, both my parents were farm kids who uh, found their way off the farm through teaching. And as uh, K through 12 teachers, they went on for terminal degrees and be both became professors of education. And that's the world I grew up in and, and uh, was exposed to college life from uh, my earliest memories. And I remember between the age of nine or 12 being on campus with my parents one day for a family walk and just said, I never want to leave this environment. And I never have. And you should tell the story of how <laughs> you ended up here in West Haven, Connecticut. Well, it's a beautiful story. It was a search firm that called me. I was serving as an assistant to the chancellor at, at TCU, Texas Christian University. And I got a phone call from this, this gentleman that said, I've got a job for you, I've got a place for you. And he started to describe Connecticut and, and uh, at that time Division II athletics. And the joke was, Glenn, do you, do you have the right guy? And he said, just go meet Steve Kaplan, uh, Chancellor Kaplan, at that time President Kaplan, and Dave Peterson and the, and the search committee. And I did. And I jokingly say they got me from the interview room to another room meeting room in the hotel, got me in a headlock and convinced me this was the best place I could be. Yeah. And you know the rest of the story from, from literally moving to, to, a, 
to a haunted house in Brantford for seven months, <laughs> to, a, to, a, to a rental house down here by the water in West Haven, to buying a house in West Haven, mm -hmm. to uh, very proud of being an aficionado of all the food in West Haven, <laughs> New Haven, and the beaches. That's, my life is essentially the University of New Haven, the beach community over here, and all the restaurants in, in this area. You got here in 2019, yeah. or, and you basically have, have, have not left. I interviewed August 15th of 2019 and literally didn't leave yeah. for a week. And what timing? It's not like a global health crisis was coming down no, the pike. No, <laughs> no. You know, I tell the story that uh, John Mays and I were new here, and Rob Thompson was on campus quite often, and uh, none of our, our spouses were here, so uh, I became very familiar with Bartels and uh, ate there every night. Mm -hmm. Big fan of, of our dining center. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, between that and all the pizza and the pasta, and I won't name all the restaurants, 25 pounds later, I looked in the mirror and <laughs> the doctor said, you might want to change your habits a little bit. And I did, and you know, I've lived to, to see a better day. Yeah. But you, <laughs> so you take this new job though, and the pandemic hits, yeah. and, and that's really what led to the Dr. Z and J-Dub podcast. Mm -hmm. So talk about what that was like coming to a new area and going pretty much directly into lockdown and Zoom. Yeah. You know, there's two parts to that story. One, uh, several individuals were, were urging me to do a social media. Mm -hmm. And I've always resisted the Twitter and that type of thing because I think it's very self-serving in many ways, and it's misinterpreted. You, can, you can't really get your emotions, your voice tone, your body language across in how many characters are, are you allowed in, in a tweet, mm -hmm. um, or, or you know, Instagram, or Facebook, or any of that other stuff. So uh, it was recommended to do a podcast, and I'd seen some podcasts at that, but I don't want to do a monologue, and that's not me, and it's not about me. So I said, well, maybe if you'll find a co-host who has some skills, and J-Dub you know, has a long history in this business. I said, okay, I'll, I'll be the, 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 the wingman. Let him be the, the point man, and, but let's let the podcast be about the guests. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we did. Yep. And, and, and you know what? It, it started literally that April mm -hmm. Correct. Of, of the pandemic when I was sequestered in this house that my friends think was haunted. Just that I'd wake up in the morning, the cupboards were open, had nothing to do with it, or the clanging. <laughs> you know, my wife would come visit. She hadn't moved here yet. And How does it, one find a, ha a haunted house? Is that listed on Zillow? Yeah, you yeah. know, it's not that hard. 5,400 <laughs> square feet and haunted. It was beautiful. It was built in 1894. It was right uh, off a, a peninsula. It's called Haycock Point in, in Branford. And my first nor new east, nor nor'easter, water was hitting my front door. Oh, I'm on the phone. I'm having to talk loudly because, you know, nor'easters are loud and I asked if I was going to live and uh, <laughs> if I needed to go upstairs. And the answer was, you might want to go upstairs. But I survived. We and, are not and, in Kansas No, you're anymore. not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> you know, between the nor'easters and, and eating seafood abs and pasta every day for the first year and a half, I had quite an experience. And, uh, but then moved over to West Haven. I jokingly call it Westyville. Uh, my three semi-adult children moved here for the pandemic and fell in love with the beach and all things West Haven, and uh, my wife ended up getting a teaching job, second grade, at a grade school in, in West Haven, and we're all in. But back to the podcast, we agreed to do it, and the first few episodes were from the lounge chair <laughs> in that living room of the haunted house, yeah. and then went to my office and then to the radio station as we could be together, and uh, I honestly have to say it's, in the past five years, one of my favorite memories. And, and, and in my life, one of my favorite things I've ever done, quite frankly. Wow, wow. We did three seasons of the Dr. Z and J-Dub <laughs> podcast, both remotely and, and in person. Let, let's take everyone back before we tell the story about Charger 360. What was the point of, of doing the Dr. Z and J-Dub podcast? And, and because, you know, there was, it started out being one thing and it's kind of yeah, morphed yeah. into something else. Well, we started with my previous role as director of athletics with it going to feature and highlight our coaches and our student athletes and, and, and things outside of UNH, you know, uh, uh, other, that's how we got Chris Berman through your ties and, and, and Dan Patrick and Steve Levy and, and Bill Snyder and other folks from around the, the country. And, and quickly it became about all things UNH. And, you know, we had 
President Kaplan on as we kicked off our centennial. That one was the most viewed podcast yeah. we ever had. And that one was live. Yes, yeah. and we used to do them them live, yeah. and wow. which which was a little scary for a non-expert <laughs> yeah. or professional in this field. Uh, you learn to pause and think before you speak. Uh, <laughs> So it's probably a little slow on those those original ones. It's a little safer when they're when they're taped. I don't Absolutely. know. I, I I was doing it for 18 years. I I, I didn't really think before I spoke. <laughs> but at you all. were you were like Howard Stern. You could you could get away with whatever you wanted, right? <laughs> that, that was kind of the ethos of the time, yeah. I guess, of morning yeah. radio. But woo, oh man. J. Dub and I would look in the camera and worry about our jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that I mean that always impressed me. You you know got some impressive names both off campus from off campus and from on campus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we really do have some rock stars in their fields yeah. all right here right. and I've heard from students that are in a class with somebody they know hey my professor's mm -hmm. pretty famous mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the professor is unlike myself to, uh, you know being humble yeah, um, yeah. And, and not telling really their background yeah. and their stories. So I love yeah, the fact yeah. that you were highlighting people and letting them tell their stories. Well, one that comes to mind is our famous poet. Yep. And uh, I hope you'll have him on here again in this really upscale mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> yes. um, set. You know, it's a far cry from my lounge chair <laughs> in, the, in the haunted house. But, uh, you know, in between getting a, a, a professional alongside you, J-Dub, and a real set, I guess I'm just kind of a thing of the past. Well, it's there's a, no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. we've been scheming yeah. how to get rid yeah. of Dr. Z. Uh, oh, wait, interim president? <laughs> yes, please. That was the impetus behind it. Exactly. The, the yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Well, obviously, your job has changed a lot. Your schedule is a lot busier yeah. than what it used to yeah. be. You know, the time commitment, right. you know, to do this show is just not going to be there. Yeah. You know, it, it is what it is. So I guess you could say we stand on the shoulders of giants here. He's kind of, he's kind of started this year. Um, this is kind of a, a, a handing off, you know, passing of the torch, a handing, a handing off of the baton, if you will. So please explain to us what, what Charger 360 is and what you hope that this new iteration of the podcast will be. So again, let's be very clear, a handing off from the amateur to the professional. All right? <laughs> Where? Um, with a real, real set and a real name and... Yeah. and you know, it, it, it really, the evolution, I, I think you've done your job really well when you work yourself out of the job and to, to really portray all things the University of New Haven. Uh, I, I think it demands a setting like this and professionals like you and to tell the story of the University of New Haven, mm -hmm. whether academically, socially, athletically, student interests, uh, our, our, our superb faculty, our outstanding staff, our alumni, I, I, this could go on for 100 oh. years and, and not be out of stories. And oh, wait, so, and uh, wait, Rob Thompson is <laughs> just contacting me. Oh, and our corporate pa partners yes, as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, he'll never forget that, yes. right? <laughs> I mean, there's so much room for all of this, yeah. and, and we have such a story to tell. If, if you hear nothing else I say today, if we've made a mistake at the University of New Haven in the last couple of decades of tremendous growth, is not telling our story loudly enough. And this is a way we can do it. And, and that's the beauty of technology today. Mm -hmm. And while social media gets blamed for so many things, and, and I'm at the forefront of that often blaming it, the fact that every man and every woman can, can have a podcast and yep. tell a story, I think is one of the great things of our generation. Yeah. It is. I agree 100 percent. You know, I always teach the students that um, we're in such a change time now because back when, you know, you were working for ESPN, I was working for WPLR. If you wanted to express yourself using those mediums, mm -hmm. you needed to be employed by, you know, Correct. people with the yeah. infrastructure, with yeah. production, distribution, yeah. promotion. Now you can do that free off the shelf software. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You can distribute it using you know, the platforms that exist now, YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. I have now, thanks to Rob, students using Anchor. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you can, so the good side of social media is you can then promote it using your social media. So yeah. this is a great time to be on a college campus. And, um, and the other thing I have to say is that with, you know, we should also talk about our donors, which are yes. so yes. incredible. And the reason we're sitting in this amazing state-of-the-art 
studio in particular, Sam and Lois Bergamy have been so generous to this institution and our students just benefit so much from having access to something like this. I think I walked in this studio for the first time five, six months ago and thought, we've got to use this more. Yeah. I had never dreamt we'd be using it in this capacity, but what a great, great way to do it. You know, I, I have a limited background in, in, in journalism, mass communications. It's more on the print side, but looking over there at the green screen and, and uh, all the things that can be done here, uh, I really think we could become a mecca for, for students interested in the world of journalism, mass communications. No question. I think this, you know, we're, we're coming to you from the studio in the Burgamy Center for mm -hmm. Science and Technology, is a big recruiting tool for prospective students. Mm -hmm. And we hope this podcast will also serve that. We think the, yeah. the, the Dr. Z and J Dub podcast served it mm -hmm. in, certain, in a certain way. I think the mm -hmm. fact that we can kind of expand the yeah. horizons a little bit yes. will be even better. The, the Charger 360 initiative, if you had to sum that up, what, what are we talking about? Because this is, the name of this podcast is part of a larger initiative here. It's to tell the story. The story of the University of New Haven. It's that simple. You know, we've been, we've been trying to think of a tagline. I think we've just gotten it. Yeah. Uh, our work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> so you take my job, you take the tagline, yeah, exactly. and I guess I'll... Uh, Interim. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> we, we knew our audience for the Dr. Z and J-Dub mm -hmm. podcast. Who, who's our audience here? Is it easy to say everybody? You know, I, I think it goes from the inside out. You know, it starts with, with uh, and, and I, I had this description given to me by a, an older colleague many, many years ago of the dartboard. And it starts with the students. When you're in higher education, the, the, the bullseye is the students. And then you work outward from, you know, the faculty and the staff and, and uh, the alumni and, and, and friends of the university and the media and, 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 and depending on the type of institution you're at, there'd be donors and or state government and, and it goes on and on and on and on. And so uh, I think everyone knows our footprint as well as I do. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, address that footprint mm -hmm. and let's expand it. We have a great story to tell. Agree. You've often said that the University of New Haven's a diamond in the rough but we're really not that in the rough anymore. Yeah. No, it really, this, I tell you, this institution has really, as I said before, it's been the best mm -hmm. uh, part of my career. And it is because, you know, I think, Dr. Z, you have a great way of kind of describing a, a UNH student, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're gritty. Yep, yep. They're, um, you know, not so impressed mm -hmm. with themselves. They're mm -hmm. willing to collaborate yep. and work as teams. That's the thing is just to me, this is just a wonderful group of students. I always say to them and they kind of go like, what? But I go, yeah. I work for you. Yeah. And you know, when they're over at the radio station, it's so wonderful that the university supports us by having a 1700 watt mm -hmm. FM mm -hmm. radio station, all student curated music. We've got 16 and growing student shows this semester. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I tell them, you know, this is a platform for you for us to help you get to where you want to go. And, um, and it's now coming back to us because they're taking that ball and running with it. You know, I just left, uh, I walked over here from Maxie Hall where I was meeting with a potential corporate sponsor of a segment of our Lee College. And uh, as I was talking to the, the president of, a, of a, a certain organization and, and some of his staff, I was telling the story of our students, much like what you just described, and very proud of the fact that we've gone from 2,000 students to 8,000 plus in the last several decades, and, and from you know, a handful of buildings to 30 plus, and our endowment, we all, we all know the numbers, yep. right? And we didn't get there overnight, and we didn't get there alone. We have tremendous faculty, tremendous staff. We, we recruit really well. Uh, the, the, the type of student who comes here, though, is what I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, incredibly diverse student population uh, uh, leading the way is 30 to 40 percent of those young folks are first generation. And I think that's what really changes the flavor of the University of New Haven is, is that grittiness that comes with that first and that, that somewhat academic innocence and, and uh, energy of a, of a first generation student. And the, I, I can do it, the, the, the first opportunity, maybe the second chances for some. Um, it, it matches our alumni over the history of the last and 100 And many years. of our students are working in jobs in addition mm -hmm. to going yes. to college. Yeah. So it's, they're uh, inspirational. 
and you value your education a little more when you're working a job to help pay for it. Uh, and that, that's, you know, I'm so proud of the type of students we have here. Love being out on the quad with them, both quads, or, or in <laughs> the student center. You should see how good he's gotten at Frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's just like he's going, you know, behind the back. Oh, and, my. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. Uh, Z, I'm going to miss you, but I think I'm in good hands here. <laughs> you're you're going to be just fine. You strap in. You are in All the... I ask is don't forget me. Have, <laughs> have me come be a guest once in a while. We would love that. Yes. Yeah. We, we, would lo we would love that, Z. It's, it's, it's been an honor and a privilege. I, uh, we give all our guests the final word, uh, you, you word, parting words of wisdom for us or for our viewers. I would just say there's so many stories to tell mm -hmm. out there. Go find them. Our students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, you know, I think I know what they are. Surprise me. Mm -hmm. let's, let's uncover the great stories, and I think this show will take off, and, and, and we'll get, that, we'll get that, that candle out in front of everyone that is, is the University of New Haven. Yeah. Well said. We'll sign off on that note. Again, Dr. Z, thanks for all you've done. Thanks for being here. Doors always open for hey. you. Come back anytime. I'll, I'll, I'll show up when you least expect it. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Bruce, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's oh, do it. Yeah. Let's do it. For Bruce, for Dr. Z, I'm Jay Dub. Thanks for watching Charger 360.